welcome to another episode of Sync Risk. My name is Charles from Blue Buddha Entertainment, LA based sync agent. And in the studio, we have a very special guest today, music supervisor Jennifer Smith. How's it going, Jennifer? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. It's so good to have you in the studio. And uh, you do some amazing work. And just to set the stage for our listeners, uh, Jennifer's a a board member on the Guild of Music Supervisors. She's also a member of the Television Academy and Recording Academy. And you would have known some of her work on hit shows like Deadly Illusions, Why Women Kill, uh, Behind the Music, to name a few. And when she first started out in her career, she also worked on the reboot of American Idol and Dancing with the Stars, The Ellen Show, the list goes on. And on top of it, she's also a faculty uh, at the LA College of Music. Did I get that right? Yeah, the Los Angeles College of Music in Pasadena. And yes, yes. So, so before we even talk about how many, you know, I don't know how you fit that into your schedule. And there's just amazing. So hats off for the amazing work you do. But would love to hear um, how you first got into the music supervision space. Oh, my gosh. Well, the joke is always with me. I'm older than I look, good genes, and a lot of sunscreen, like a lot of sunscreen. Um, so I'm, I know other guests have definitely mentioned this in the past, but back in the day, music supervision wasn't really known about or talked about like it is now. So I didn't know this existed. I know I've always wanted to work in entertainment. Um, I've always been a music person. I was that nerdy kid that, you know, made a, this. This is going to date me, everyone. Cassette tapes. You know, having to make mixed cassette tapes. I was always a nerd reading liner notes and everything. Um, I actually come from a theater background. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's oh. important to mention because it's kind of helped me um, in my craft um, and grow within my craft as well. So I, um, I had no idea about this. I just, uh, I got a job at Evan Greenspan's company and learned a lot there. It was a great first job. I literally got thrown into the fire. I read late and, list li and read old licenses. I listened to phone calls. Um, you know, it was a really great first job. People realized I had an ear and a mm -hmm. talent and really kind of helped me grow, even though I was still answering phones. So even though I was given opportunity, I still answered phones and said, good morning. <laughs> So uh, mm -hmm. it's just about, you know, working really hard. And then Cobalt, this little tiny company, music company that no one's ever heard of, of course. Um, they were in the U.S. They had a small office. And Chris Lakey, mm -hmm. actually, Chris Lakey and Jessica Beck, they called me and were wanting to build out the sync department. I didn't really know what Cobalt was. I'll be honest. I didn't know what the job was. Mm -hmm. But I just knew um, I did some research on the company. It kind of it aligned with my values with music. And I was like, as much as I love working in production and that job, I think I need to spread my wings, even though I don't know what this is. And I took that job mm -hmm. at Cobalt. I was there for seven years. I don't know. Time flies. Yeah. Um, and I call that my master's program because when I was there, it was yeah. so tiny. I learned about copyright, A&R, pitching, sync, mm. quoting, label, marketing. It was such a great opportunity that made me a stronger music supervisor. But I'm mm -hmm. a sonic storyteller. My passion is in production. So mm. American Idol had been calling me for a long time and said, this is it. This is the last phone call. We moved from Fox to ABC. And I said, I'm ready to come home. So that was a way for me to get back nice. into production. And then I worked with that amazing team, an amazing show for one season. And mm -hmm. then, you know, with a giant show like that, you, you know, you're just doing that show. And word got back on the street that I was back. And so I had to make a decision, stay with mm. Idol or jump. And I jumped. <laughs> and so here we are. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's just the reason I mentioned theater is uh, we are sonic storytellers. Um, it's a mixture of creative and business. We're not playlisters. Um, <laughs> and theater really helps me because uh, to understand environment and character and politics and everything, that kind of theater <laughs> background really helps me, um, help me kind of realize my, my superpower in this craft. Everyone mm. in this craft, craft has a different superpower. For me, I'm very character, environment-driven, story-driven, which um, is very theater background. Um, mm -hmm. Everything has an intention, just like theater. You don't just have something randomly there. It adds mm. to the story. If it doesn't add, it's not needed. If it doesn't make 
the audience feel a certain way or help them, it's not needed. Yeah. So that's why theater background is mm. really important for me to mention because my superpowers mm -hmm. in environment and character and story. Mm. Love it. No, so that's amazing because f from being on the selling side of music with Cobalt and then now as a music supervisor working with the studios and productions, you're a buyer of music. And like you said, two sides of that coin, mm -hmm. you're able to, that's critical. Um, like, I like that what you said, the master's program. It was my master's program. And I think it's important to be successful in this industry. You have to understand every angle. So when I go talk to, you know, music partners are so important. As a supervisor, you're only as good as your Rolodex. That's another old school term for people out there. Um, <laughs> it's right. to understand how to communicate these things yeah. to your music partners, as well as communicate to your director, your producer, your network exec, your studio exec. It's really important to understand how mm -hmm. we can come together as a team to get the project done. I think a lot of people don't understand the nuances of both sides. And if you don't understand <clears throat> those nuances, there's, there's not a way to build a relationship and to come to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to be able to come together to get the job done. So, and I know, yes. uh, I know, so I also know how difficult it can be for, for music partners talking to their clients. So I'm like, okay, I need to add this extra information because I know this person's going to be asked this and I'd rather arm them with the information to make them look amazing to their clients. Yes. so I can get what I need. Hmm. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And I think it's a lost art, Jennifer, as well. It's that collaborative effect. Cause we both, I think, you know, I came up with the cassette as well and, <laughs> The concept pressing the flesh when talking about music in a brief, getting on the phone, you know, Jen Pike and Anne Klein, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like some folks are like, it's just all about email, but no. things aren't exactly things can get lost and, and, uh, it can get lost in translation critical for to, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think, um, so that's amazing. So then, and then you started, so you started your own indie music supervision firm. Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's one, it was a decision that I was ready for. Um, when you're striking out on your own, it's not for the <laughs> faint of heart. It's very, very difficult. Um, I think a lot of people say, I want to be a music supervisor and they're like, I'm going to, you know, go out on my own, but there's so many nuances that go into that mm -hmm. and decisions as well as mm -hmm. do you have a client Rolodex, right? Do you have a client base for me jumping on my own is because I came from production. People knew my name, even though I had such a huge gap in credits in entertainment, you're only as mm -hmm. good as your last credit, to be honest. So I really took a risk yes. because all my credits mean nothing. They meant absolutely nothing. And even though I worked on the American Idol team, which is a great credit, it's still one and you have this huge gap. So I literally had to start mm -hmm. over even though I had experience wow. and name. So, you know, it's yeah. it, in this job every day you're hustling, every day you're working really hard. Uh, Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I want to be a music supervisor, so I'm just going to do it. I think you need to be mentored. You need to learn. You need to mm -hmm. fall. You need to fail. You need to learn. And mm -hmm. before you go out on your own, there's so many different things that go into it. A lot of people say, oh, I can do this. And I'm like, um, you should go get, you know, a job and learn and work under someone yeah. and yeah. have those different mm -hmm. things because it's not just business and creative. It's also liability. You know, you. Yes. are in charge of all the music. So you can't be like, well, I didn't know. So that, that's not really an answer. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. No, and you touched on some great points, Jennifer, and to unpack it even more, as far as mentorship programs, do you want to talk about some of your work there? And I know you do a lot in the community. Yeah. Um, well, I really believe in mentoring. Um, I do not have an internship program currently. Um, Rat Dance Party is you're looking at rat dance party, my rodent assistants are sleeping in a hammock. So sometimes they're the interns, um, you know, type of thing. So I know eventually one day I'd like to have an internship program, but I really do believe in mentorship. I'm very active in the guild. Uh, I teach at the Los Angeles College of Music. Um, for me, there's so much misinformation out there for musicians and I see how music gets taken yeah. advantage of. So, and there's so much talent. There's students literally from all over the world I work with some amazing mm. students when we get to hear music and give them the foundation to be successful in their craft. Um, music, music supervision, uh, anything entertainment, it is the ultimate marathon that's ultimate hard work. Mm. But 
what yeah. it starts with is a foundation. So I, you know, it, it's really sweet. One of my students, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I don't realize sometimes when I'm teaching the impact I make, but then they reach out to me because I always say, just because I'm not your teacher, you know, this, this quarter is over, I'm always here for you. Yeah. And they'll just send me these yeah. nice notes about how I gave them the tools for something. They met with a publisher and, mm-hmm. you know, the my class made a difference and they were able to impress the publisher, but also help renegotiate a better deal or that they said, you know, I met with someone who was a manager and I realized they weren't the mm-hmm. right person because of the, you know, the different exercises we do in class. And um, those things are also mentorship. You know, education is also mentorship, yeah. uh, taking classes, listening, mm-hmm. going to lectures. I go to educational things all the time. I learn from my colleagues. Mm. We talk to each other. I'll call them and say, Hey, yeah. how do you handle this? Or have you ever run into this? Right. Oh yeah, I did X, Y, Z. Oh, I never thought about it. So it's, it's important to always grow. You're never a hundred percent. No. And the, <clears throat> with the ever changing landscape, Jennifer, mm-hmm. that's co- you know, with AI and then don't even get me started. Currently... On <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a whole separate combo. <laughs> Yes, that'll be part two. We'll have you back. But yeah, and then, you know, as far as what's, what's you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're 120 days in. We've got the work stoppage with the WGA and the SAG-AFTRA. Uh, yeah. So that's a good segue into as far as, you know, music supervisors. Before the strike happened, there was, was a motion to try and form a union for music supervisors. If you want to touch on that and, and where things might be. So, you know, the strike affects everyone. It's not just writers and actors or, um, you know, above the line. It affects below the line music supervisors. It affects catering companies, dry cleaners. You know, we it's a huge web that it affects. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, during this time, please be um, empathetic that people have different points of view of what's going on. People are in different situations. Please don't ask people um, what they're working on. Don't assume they're working. Don't assume they're not working. I think it's just important to be a human during this time. So I am definitely going to say that. Uh, Music supervision is an amazing craft. We have zero protections. Before the strike, we have zero protections. We currently have no protections. And by protections, Mm. I mean, here's the real thing. You don't get paid on time. You know, I have worked on studio projects where I went six months without getting paid when everyone else gets paid, you know, eight months, right, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no payment schedule. You know, what other job are you not paid in a timely manner or every other week? Uh, There's no health care. There's no benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I was very grateful that during COVID when I was working, um, I had protection under the COVID rules. So I had to go get COVID tested, you know, those types of things for on set. But if those things mm-hmm. didn't exist, I would have no protections. And if I, I mean, unfortunately, if I had gotten sick on set, I would have no protections because again, I'm just a music supervisor. So these are things to right. think about when you get in this craft, we're extremely underpaid. Um, our, our pay has not gone up since oof, forever. You know, um, sometimes you, most of the time you work under minimum wage. Um, or mm-hmm. negative amount. Um, people just don't seem to want to pay people equitably, right? So, you know, uh, again, I know this is probably a hot button for people. We will never have equality in the industry. Mm. A director, an actor, a writer might be seen different as a music supervisor, but we deserve protections and equity, right? And we yes. just don't have that. So during this time, um, if you are affected as a music supervisor, um, there's also, you know, the Music Cares program for musicians. They do have different resources available. Um, It's not a handout. You do have to fill out an application. There are all these different things. But um, the Entertainment Fund is open for people that work in entertainment. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be a writer. You don't have to be a director. However, some of the resources out there are only for certain different crafts. So do your research. Hmm. Also, you know, if you're Los Angeles based or other places, you know, New York, they have food banks that are available as well. There are Mm -hmm. resources out there. You just have to do the research. Um, Women in Film has, uh, I believe on their website, they have a a resource tab for different crafts. Go to the entertainment fund and look. I'm sure they have different resources. Uh, Music Cares probably has a bunch of resources on the Recording Academy site. There are resources mm-hmm. out for people during this time. And for the amazing, you know, and we'll, we'll... yeah, and you know, um, unionization. It's 
-hmm. it's an interesting time um, in the current ecosystem mm -hmm. we live in when SAG, WGA, all those different um, unions started, it was a different year. Uh, when you are unionizing, mm -hmm. you have to, there's different things. Um, if you go to the labor board, it's under federal law. It's under the law that determine if you have mm -hmm. the right to unionize. So I think a lot of people, uh, they yes. don't realize it has to do with laws within the time. If we tried to unionize maybe mm -hmm. 10 years ago, it'd be a different conversation than it is right now. So uh, yeah. anything with change no. is a marathon, yeah. not a sprint. We are not going to continue to stop to get protections and rights. And mm -hmm. my hope is mm -hmm. that people that are upcoming in this beautiful craft don't have to go through 1% of anything that we are going through now or ever had to go through. Well said, well said. And I think, you know, around <clears throat> whether it's uh UPS strike, I mean, mm -hmm. there's, you know, major, major, major corporations and the chasm between workers and corporations and just finding that the equity people being paid fairly for their, for their work. And I think, correct, Jennifer, there's a, what folks can do to help support music supervisors. I think there was a petition circulating. Yeah, I, there's, so there's, folks, mm -hmm. you know, there's a petition. I think if you work in entertainment, it's about having those conversations. A lot of people don't yeah. know we don't have protections, right? Because my editor has protections. I don't. So how would a post supervisor know that unless I said something or if the editor said, hey, you know, Jen doesn't have protections. So maybe you shouldn't call her at like two in the morning. So, uh, yes. or she doesn't get paid overtime. So maybe, you know, I get paid overtime or to work a holiday. Do we actually need her? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's just, I think, a level of respect. Um, and it's also people mm -hmm. having conversations and supporting each other. You know, education is, education and information is really important. And just sitting and not mm -hmm. talking about it, about those things is what doesn't create change is by saying, hey, you know, I don't yeah. have, you know, it's just about giving people the tools for change, right? You can't say someone is, you know, doing something on purpose or, the, mm -hmm. oh, well, they just don't believe in, in, in us having protections. I'm going to say something that, again, is an unpopular opinion about some people, but showrunners don't know that we have no protections. They don't know how much we're paid. Wow. They don't know any of these deal points. So if you right. have a really good relationship with your showrunner, you can have these conversations. But mm -hmm. also understanding mm -hmm. the landscape of change is you have to know politics, right? People are not the enemy. Yes. The system is the enemy. We have to focus on systematic yes. change and stop pointing fingers at, at people and saying that person is evil. That's not how right. you create change. Also, the entertainment yeah. industry is 100% different than it was 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years mm -hmm. ago. In the current modern landscape, yeah. you have to look at things and say, how do we exist <clears throat> with the current world, how entertainment is working, <clears throat> and how do we create those change and create those different, um, you know, equitable different things. I know I'm not going to get paid the <clears throat> same as a high-end actor. I'm very aware of that. But I should get paid <clears throat> to have a livable wage. One, yeah. a livable wage should be a non-negotiable tool. But people are like, well, you know. People get paid a thousand dollars on a film, five thousand dollars on a film, you know, three thousand hmm. dollars on episode of TV. This is all before taxes. Films, TV, they can take wow. years. And then if there's a strike, maybe you don't get paid. Everyone else doesn't work, but you're required to work without extra pay. So hmm. again, it's about equitable. I know equality, you know, everyone in this day and age, everyone wants equality, but again, actor versus music hmm. supervisor or a director or a writer you know, or these different other crafts, you know, I'll take equitable over equality. I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Everyone has their own opinions. So you know, yeah, I am not the gospel. No, but I believe in systematic change. It's all about systematic change. Step by step. Yeah. And I think a real good point to echo there is having those conversations with the show runner. So then mm -hmm. someone can advocate for the music supervisor. Exactly. Like you said, yeah. Because, you know, the studio might say who, you know, again, the person who makes these decisions has no idea, right? They're, they're not the people mm. you talk to. It may not even be the direct person the showrunner talks to, but having those conversations and then they can go have those mm -hmm. conversations with the appropriate people to go up the chain. Because if I try to talk to say, yeah. business affairs or the head of the music department, they, they don't, 
again, it's it's about the system. It's not about the person. That person who runs that music department yeah. is not the enemy. They're not. Yeah. They're just a person. And they would be like, I'd love to pay you more, however, you know, type of thing. So right. it's about creating that systematic yeah. change. But if your showrunner has the power to do something, you need to talk to them about it. And mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. in this industry are very important. And there's a lot of politics. Maybe that's a brand new showrunner that's like, I would love to. However, I just mm -hmm. signed a deal. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. You know, you mm -hmm. have to understand the politics. So if they're like, I would love to, but I can't, you can't blame them. Right. Because yes. remember, this is about politics. This is about the system. You know, mm -hmm. everything's and whether it's good or bad, it's there. And this is about systematic yeah. change. And it's a marathon. This isn't a one time thing. This isn't even a right. a year thing. It, mm -hmm. it can it can take years and years and years. But the more you have the conversation and you educate people, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. having conversations mm -hmm. with your producers, your producers have more power. So it's about talking to your producers as well and building those relationships that you can have an honest conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was at Capitol Records in the nineties. So, Oh, you know all about the politics then. Oof. Yes. CDs from, and then went technology, you know, downloads, streaming. So like you said, I mean, film, music, the both industries, you know, at the end of the day, people have to realize, you know, companies are in business to make money. So bottom lines happen. But like you said, there needs to be recognition of the fair, the equality, because things, mm -hmm. the dynamic shift is, is, um, and things move so quickly, because I think, you know, out of the pandemic, then things got fast tracked into where we are now, everyone was at home. So there was an opportunity for the streamers to say, hey, content, but did the decision makers include those folks who are creating the craft? Probably no. not. So no, no. here we are. Yeah. Yeah. No. So like you said, and I like your an, an analog of it's a marathon it's, mm -hmm. and, and look, making incremental changes and steps and that, and, and being in that moment because it's easy to get, you know, bogged down in the day to day, but keeping focused in at the long term. So, and then Jennifer, if you want to touch on, because correct, if you're not a music supervisor, there is the friends of the guild where people can apply. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, to become a member at the guild of music supervisors, there's different membership tiers. You have friend of the guild, which is if you are a music creator, if you own mm -hmm. a catalog, if you pitch music, um, you can still be a valued member of our community. And then obviously for different membership tiers, um, it is for music supervisors. So if you're starting out, there's a tier for you. If you're a mid-level person, there's a mid-level tier for you. If you're a corporate person, if you work at a company mm -hmm. in-house somewhere, we do, you know, our corporate members are also very important as well as our freelance music supervisors. So, you know, there's there's a tier for everyone and you kind of, as you grow in your crafts, you know, obviously your membership tier will, will change. And then as far as correct, if you're an artist, so that they would be deemed to be a, a friend, friend of, the, of guild. the guild. Yes, so music creator, whether yeah. you're a writer, artist, producer, music producer. <laughs> I always yes, have to like say, I'm like, cool. I always have to say like, when I say producer or creator, I always have to say music or content. Depending <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on who I'm talking to. <laughs> right. No, good point. Good point. But yeah, we, we can drop a link uh, to the website for the Guild of Music Supervisors. Amazing. And then, yeah, would love to. And I just want to touch on your course. Um, what's the... Do you teach is on the sync side um, at the school? What's what's the the content there? Oh, so I teach. Um, I have um, a, I have mu I have music artists. I have music writers. I have managers. I have uh, you know people that want to start their. It's literally anyone anyone from music, right? So there are students at the school <sighs> from you know music producers to songwriters to artists to people that want to get in on business side. Um, just every class is unique and different with the type of students. Okay. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'll teach, I teach music business um, one and two. And then I also teach, I'm part of the master's program there as well, which is teaching writing music, uh, original music for picture. 
So you uh-huh. know, from whether it's writing from a, a sync brief, you know, learning about how <laughs> to do that to how to become the next Diane Warren, how do you get hired on these films, or if you're going to write TV show music, you no. know, from interview to script to concept to notes to the politics behind it to everything that goes on with that. So we literally start with the script and go all the way through. Very nice, very comprehensive, and I'm happy to po- I could post a link through. And so a good question through line, Jennifer, advice for an independent artist looking to break into the sync space. What one piece of advice would, would you give them? Get your business buttoned up, which means splits. Who are your co-writers? Are you union? <laughs> are you non-union? Registering your stuff properly. Mm-hmm. Are you findable? You know, do you understand the deals that you're signing, um, you know, getting your business buttoned up. As I always say, you can throw a rock and hit a lot of talented people, but the people that actually make it in the industry are people that know this is a business. So they have Mm. that foundation to make it, you know, to make it. And whether you become, as you continue to grow and you get signed to a bigger deal or you change to a bigger management company, if your business isn't buttoned up, you're not going to be successful. I would echo that 100%. And then it's having, like you said, once you have your foundation, then you know how to choose the right manager, your publicist, mm-hmm. building your team around you and yeah. having them complement your 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 skill set. Exactly. And I think a lot of people think if I get signed or if I have a sync agent or if I have a, a manager, publicist that you don't do anything, you hustle just as hard. They're an extension mm-hmm. of your team. And it's important to communicate with your team and to give them the res- the assets that you need, music, split <clears throat> sheets, photos, yeah. keep them up yeah. to date, have these conversations. And if they need to tell you something that's a hard conversation, be open and receptive because they are an extension of your team to help you. Mm-hmm. And I would say, you know, don't be afraid of change because something that like you said, and so similarly of, you know, building a team that not everyone's just a yes person because they're not going to push you out of your comfort zone to, to become stronger. No, I, I mean, my team, yeah. you know, my team, they, they know they can be honest with me about things and they do push me out of my comfort zone. And we do have, you know, big conversations and small conversations about different things having to do with, yeah. with my craft and where I see my trajectory of my company and my, my goals in everything I want to do. We have these conversations and we, no, it's, 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 sometimes it's uncomfortable and I'm open to uncomfortable because that's how mm-hmm. I become better. hundred percent. And you have to know, you know, and you also have to know your, your line, right? Your morals and your lines. You know, I turn down projects mm-hmm. that sometimes I just are not in line with my personal values and that's okay. It's just not the right fit for me. It'll be the right fit for someone else. And I always, you know, I always say, you know, good luck on your vision. I hope your project goes well. Just, you know, sometimes mm. it's just not right for you and that's okay. Yeah. And sometimes, yes, you yes. know, you pick the wrong team members and instead of blaming <clears throat> them, you need to say, what did I learn from this? I have definitely mm. picked the wrong team members before as well. And I could say, well, how could have I handled this better? What should have I looked for before? Mm-hmm. What should have I asked? Mm. And, you know, really grow and learn from those different experiences. A great point there, Jennifer, as well as recognizing, because odds are those traits or characteristics in, a, in an individual, you'll, we'll see them in somebody else. And it's up to us to recognize like, uh-oh, I'm, I'm repeat, we tend to repeat our same mistakes and, and growing from it. And, and go with your gut. Um, yeah. You know, I'm still, I'm still learning every single day. And I think that's what's amazing about working being a music supervisor for myself and also having my own company is I'm growing every single day and I'm mm. learning and, you know, still, still stumbling. The stumble's important. <laughs> what do you learn from it? Oh yes, indeed. So wanted to touch on briefly. So the difference between say dancing with the stars and American idol is different from working, say, on a scripted show as far as what your job is as oh, a music supervisor? I, you know, I think, you know, every job's unique and different. Um, I I talk to fellow colleagues of mine all the time. Um, <clears throat> you know, un- the unscripted space is actually the hardest space to work in. So if you are amazing mm-hmm. in the unscripted space, scripted is a walk in the park, right? 
film, you know, films a walk in the park. Um, you learn things in unscripted mm. that can be transferable. Um, working on st- uh, shows like Dancing with the Stars and Idol, they really gave me a next level skill set. Um, again, from the theater background, mm. coming from you know theater and dance helped me on Dancing with the Stars. Um, working at <laughs> some place like Cobalt helped me with something like Idol, but also mm. I learned so much on Idol that was extra than what I didn't have access to before. So, you know, every show's unique yeah. and different type of thing. A musical, if you've done scripted mm. before and you have musical moments, singing, dancing, any of those things, that's a different skill set to have to deal with all of those things ahead of time than just a straight film where you're looking at working with just a composer mm. or you're doing working with a composer right. and working with needle drops. Everything, every project's unique yeah. and different that, you know, it's okay to not be ready for something you know i have a friend who's a music supervisor she's worked in this space a long time she got a project where she had some you know some on cameras she's never really dealt with that and she called me and so we Mm -hmm. kind of split it you know i was not the music supervisor on this film Mm -hmm. i said just i'm a consultant that's fine so you know and i handled her on cameras because she's like i you know Mm -hmm. it's a very different skill set and she's a very experienced person and some people that work in the unscripted world, you know, they go to scripted and then they go to unscripted. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. I don't know what I'm doing. How are you, you wow. know, handling this? And, you know, every project's unique yeah. and different. If you do one show, you can't, you know, it's okay mm-hmm. if you're not ready for another. And I think a lot of people are too scared to say no on projects because mm. they're like, if I say no, they're not going to call me back. That's not true. Maybe you're not ready for a musical. Maybe you're not right. ready for a giant musical show. That's okay. You will get sure. there. You will get there. Or yeah. you could say, can I partner with someone? And then you call someone and say, hey, will you co-supervise mm-hmm. with me? Because then you can mm-hmm. learn from someone mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, that's a great point. In this industry, Laurel... you can't you can't yeah. fake it till you make it. There's so many things involved. This isn't something yeah. I think there's so much misinformation. A lot of people fake it till they make it. Or mm-hmm. they just are not, you know, they're not willing to do the work, which the work is actually right. learning. Yeah, hundred percent. Laura Webb and I know Lindsay Wolfington. They'll collab on like with yeah. You know, I mean, uh, tall I mean, boys. I've, yeah. I mean, they're they're amazing music supervisors and humans. So of course, you know, everyone <laughs> everyone has their different things that they do, and it's okay to say no. Yeah. And it's okay to say maybe I'm not ready, or you know, <laughs> I think a lot of people are scared to admit those things. You shouldn't be. If I, to be honest, if I, think, I didn't come from a theater background, yeah. if I didn't work on, if I wasn't lucky to learn on giant shows like Dancing with the Stars, if I wasn't part of the American mm. Idol team, I probably wouldn't have mm-hmm. be ready for certain things in right now. I probably would have to wait a few more years and try to ask to mentor maybe under someone. Mm. Um, you mm. know, every every project I feel adds to your arsenal and adds yeah. to, you know, your experience level. And, you know, credits credits don't dictate worth. And I would like to say that to everyone, mm-hmm. whether you're a music creator or a music supervisor or even anything. In this entire industry, we look at credits as worth. There are some people that have major credits in this industry that, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They you know, they, again, they've failed forward. That does not dictate mm. their worth. They have no more value than you. You know, mm. they're not more, you know, talented than you on certain things. So mm. I just wanted to put that out there because we compare ourselves all the time with other people. Yeah. It's, and in this day and age, it's hyper, uh, um, oh, it's uh, hyper. With social it's hy- media. Yeah. It's like social media. Control. Just... It's out of right. control. I'm not very good at social yeah. media. Like, <laughs> Not I. I feel a little too old for it sometimes, or I'm just like eh, I try. I try. That's why it's mostly rap pics, you know, rap pictures. <laughs> I'm not very good. But at it. No, I'm trying no. to be better. Yeah, it's but it's and then it's it sucks because then we're just feeding the machine, feeding the beat, the algorithms. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a catch. It's a double edged sword. So and then I know you did some shows on Netflix and on stream with the streamers. So I had missed it, but I heard great reviews about uh, why women kill. Yes, yes, um, that is created by Mark Cherry. He was the creator of Desperate Housewives. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, even Lagoria actually directed one of our episodes. Um, 
in season two, which was exciting. Oh, cool. um, Try to remember which one. I know that's so bad not to remember the number, but I can barely remember. Did I have breakfast? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting working with different types of creators. Someone like Mark Cherry, who, you know, he started a bunch of things that were in comedy and in the industry at a certain time and it still clicks and but he comes from a theater background so he's a very oh. musical person and working mm -hmm. with someone like him is very different than someone who is not a musical person um but yeah why women kill was great um unfortunately due to you know um so reasons still unknown we are <laughs> you know our show got canceled while we were filming season three so that was last year the last year hmm. i don't remember everything was so yeah we were we were in the middle of filming and unfortunately you know we got canceled um that's also hmm. something to realize uh music supervision is not steady i worked on a hit network show and we were filming and we get canceled and you don't get paid out so hmm. you know these are things i think people think i i have noticed that with with people they think oh i'm gonna get you know if, if a contract is x amount of money you know let's say I'm making this up. This isn't a real thing. Okay, people, these numbers are not real. <laughs> if I were to say, you know, you're getting paid, you know, a big contract on some sort of number and, you know, mm -hmm. you don't get that contract. If your show gets canceled, maybe you only get half of a fee or half of an episode or, you know, you're not getting the whole mm -hmm. thing. Again, it's not like an actor who gets paid out of their contract, right? Where they get paid millions of dollars, right. whether the show goes forward or not. But for us, you're like begging for your, for your half your check, which could be $2,000 or something, yeah. uh, $4,000 or whatever. Um, right. Those numbers are real. <laughs> I just said people will pay, <laughs> you know, next to nothing. Um, wow. But I'm sorry, I totally lost track of my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but no yeah, worries. working working on someone with you know who's very musically oriented is so is so fun. Um, Why Women Kill mm -hmm. was a really great show to work on. It was fun script, great team. Um, for me, <laughs> musically, it was really fun. Um, I do miss working on that show, even though it was very difficult. Um, mm. Every show is difficult in its own ways, but <laughs> you know we shot season two during COVID, so having to deal with <sighs> on cameras and and everything during COVID was crazy and then we were working wow. on season three and we still have certain code we had the time there were certain COVID protocols so still having to work within that was was difficult but yeah. um that's why I kind of laugh sometimes when someone says well we want to do this this and this do you think that's possible and I'm like I did on cameras during COVID we'll be fine so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I and then working, that. yeah, yeah, and then you know, working on a show like Behind the Music, where you're really focusing on an artist's story, is a very different skill set mm. than having to work in scripted, because you have pre-existing mm. music that you have to weave into the story. But how do you figure out what's the right lyric up? What's the right song? What's the right music to talk about during that time in history? Because it's only, you know, it's not like a two-hour mm. episode. So it's really focusing nice. with the story teams. You work really closely with the storyboarding, with the music, with mm -hmm. you know, talent, with you know the network. It, there's a lot of moving parts that go with it. Yeah, yeah. And correct, Jennifer, a good good thing to underscore as well. And then we'll segue into our final question. But you know, <clears throat> by the time you work on something, it may the air date could be far off into the future. So that also impacts of when you're paid. Yes. Yes. So um, unfortunately, we, you know, people say we get paid once there's an air date. Well, if a net, you know, the network dictates an air date, the work is done. Why haven't I been mm. paid? And what if the episode never mm. airs? How do you protect yourself to get paid? Yeah. Yeah. That's a rhetorical question. 100%. That's things to, uh, and that's, that's, uh, do your homework. Like you said, if you're an independent artist or a music supervisor and, uh, What's your quote again? Button up your business. <laughs> Get your business buttoned up. <laughs> that seems my go-to go line. Get your business buttoned up. Yes, button up your business, <laughs> you know. Button up your business. <laughs> the, the three Vs. Um, so our final question I always like to pose to our guests, what's on repeat right now on your, your, your playlist? Any artists that you're uh, <laughs> raving about? So um, 
even though I grew up with cassette tapes, I also grew up with records. So I do love records and, you know, all that stuff. But um, I've always been kind of a music nerd, not so much a snob. Um, <laughs> so I like to try, I, I listen to literally all things. I mean, right now it's been like the Barbie soundtrack because I'm obsessed with that movie like everyone. Um, to I really love the new <laughs> album by Bad Omens to going back to the 90s to literally the 2000 like every day is different every day is different yeah. um you know i talked to my friends about what they're playing um uh, lola blanc released a new song yesterday i think it's called like trust me or something that i'm loving right now and you know it's just literally all over the place of so, like types of music to artists to eras mm -hmm. to things um on a personal level most most music i listen to you know, that's like all my free fun time, not for work, Jen. It's like right. real Jen is <laughs> listening to uh -huh. these things. But for work, then, of course, you know, it's based off my my projects and my creative or, you know, my vibes. If, you know, mm -hmm. a filmmaker sends me a playlist of things that they're kind of liking, then I can listen to it to kind of figure out um, our music language. So mm. figure out what their language is so I can <laughs> communicate with them when I start pulling things or ideas. Finding that balance of listening for pleasure and the listening for work because it's a tough challenge. It is. It, 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 it yeah. is tough. It it is can be tough. There are days where I'm like, I I just you know I just need to sit in silence. <laughs> um, if I really need to reset, I put on classical music. That's my reset mm -hmm. button where I'm just like sometimes my brain is like literally all over the place between characters and environments and eras and songs. And, and I'm just like, I yeah. need to reset. So I'll just stick on classical vinyl and I'll just lay on the floor Very nice. and just yeah. completely detach. Detach. Yeah. So I think that said, because as far as workflows go, Jennifer, is there a certain time of the day that suits you for like, all right, I got to do admin stuff. I got to be on point for really digesting the music. So in any given day or late at night, I got to just, I got to look at some playback. So what's, what, what's your uh, go-to time of day to. I don't, every day is unique and different. I wake up and I'm just mm. like, I, you know, people are like I eat lunch at this time. I'm like, well, I'm going to try to remember to eat today. That's going to be a goal. That's a goal every day. I'm going <laughs> to try to get up and walk. Um, every day is unique. You know, I might be having to read scripts, watch cuts, do pre-records, meetings, 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 admin, mm. research, budget reports, everything in between. So every day is kind of unique and yeah. different about where the priorities lie. Because if a cut comes in, that takes precedent right. over this. But I'm like, if I have to do two things at once, like I just, you know, every day is unique and different. It's a puzzle. Every day is a unique puzzle. <laughs> No, to get it all that's, done. I think, to get it all done. <laughs> get it all done. And that, you know, testimony to what you guys do. And, uh, you know, for our listeners, you know, artists reaching out to music supervisor, you know, respect, respect your work. Because it's, it's, you guys are putting out fires. I mean, multi, multi spinning plates at any given moment and, and just keeping sane and then, and then having time for yourself to, uh, to, to, to work through it. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, I really, I think a lot of us are trying to do this, this balance thing and make more times for ourselves. And in this day and age, because we live in the digital age and there's like social media and people like, you know, um, you know, for me, my edit base never opened back up. So I'm a hundred percent remote, which is not that great. <laughs> you know, I mean, mm. I still have to go in for certain things, but before I would go into, you know, an edit bay in an office like three days a week, you know, at the studio and, <laughs> you know, it was a nice little mm. balance, but you know, I think people think you're always available and, you know, they just, people get so sucked into their own world. that They don't realize one music supervisors were human. You know, I yeah. want to spend time with my friends, with my family. I would like my me time, you know, those different things. Mm -hmm. And if you keep mm -hmm. emailing someone and we don't respond, we're not jerks. Right. I am a human. I, you yeah. know, it's nothing personal. It's, it's, mm -hmm. I think people are like me, 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 music supervisors. We don't work for you. So please don't ask mm -hmm. us back for feedback on music. You know, that is something you ask your friends. That's something you ask your sync agent right. to give you feedback, your publisher, your right. label, your manager, your agent, your, you know, those things. Um, yeah. I've noticed that people since COVID have gotten more aggressive, which really turns me off where it's like these mm. constant harassment emails, um, mm. you know, kind of things. I have been out at places trying to have 
some sort of personal life and no, mm. I'm not going to cater to your needs. Like <laughs> not going to cater to your needs. I was on a flight trying to get to my brother's wedding. You know, our, we had an emergency landing. We had to get on standby to another flight. I had to make the wedding in time. <laughs> I was marrying him and on our plane, <laughs> was an independent artist who the entire last plane, which we've been traveling for 24 hours. I don't know if I'm gonna make my brother's wedding. I was very stressed out mm -hmm. trying to pitch me mm -hmm. music on the plane when every body language, you know, I'm wearing a mask and they're like, Jennifer, is that Jennifer Smith? Is that you? Yeah. And I was like, no. And I'm wearing a mask and I have my book up. Uh, yeah. Like it's yeah. not appropriate. Re right. right. And yeah. it's just, respect people's space if they're out with their family with their friends you know you can say hello hi nice to see you nice to see yeah. you too if that's the extent of our conversation yeah. it's not me being, being right. rude it's just i need yes. boundaries and space and that also yes. goes with emails if i don't email you back it's nothing mm -hmm. personal or anyone you know people right. add your music i do this all the time i add it to my disco library as long as you put mm -hmm. your metadata and all the information in there you know Maybe I'll pop yeah. up for a project or something. But again, we are not horrible humans yeah. for not catering to your needs. And right. it's just been getting more yeah. and more out of control. And it gives me anxiety yeah. half the time. No. Amanda Creed Thomas said it best in, in I think, uh, getting inside the mind of a music supervisor in her, her book, which she was saying, if you do meet a music supervisor, let the music supervisor dictate and, and the convo. You know, don't yeah. try and keep it going because – you know, it's nuts out there. And I think PJ Bloom, to echo what you went through, PJ I wrote in the forward, I think he was at a barbershop getting his haircut and a yeah. guy was trying to give him a CD. And he's like, uh, I'm a little in the middle of something. Well, yeah, well, I feel bad so, for the guy that was yeah. sitting between me and this independent artist because he's like, what is going on? <sighs> I felt so bad for this person. <sighs> Um, well, thank but goodness it was, he wasn't right next to you. You were like, I need to move my seat. Well, oh my I mean, goodness. I got, we were on standby. Sorry, we got the last seat. It was, it was madness. Oh, but, um, right, like I said, right. for, it's about building authentic relationships, right? And, and if your music yeah. does not work for my project, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just isn't what the vision dictates sonically. Yes. And I think the closing note is, you know, be, be a human. confident in your music. Yeah, be in the moment. And if it does work, it may work later. You may hang on to that. You're like, hey, I hear something here that I'm going to hang on to this. And then, you know, respecting the boundaries. And, uh, but yeah, no, I'm glad we touched on that because that's something, you know, Melanie Mitchell, I had on, we talked about, you know, she's you know, go through me as a sync agent because we're vetted. Yeah. And we, yeah. Yeah, because, um, you know, I, you know, I build relationships with people all the time. And sometimes your music just mm -hmm. I'll, never works for the projects I work on or, um, you know, mm -hmm. music has to bend to picture. And if your music doesn't bend to the picture, I can't use it. So, you know, it's about yep. the dialogue. It's about the performance. It's about the story. If the music doesn't add anything and it doesn't bend right then, mm. you know, we can't use it, um, you know, on Why Women Kill in an episode, I, you know, it was like uh, me and the music editor, two music editors and the producer, we were trying to get this one piece of music to bend because they were like, we love this. It was off by two frames and we just couldn't, we just uh, couldn't use it. And we had to, yeah. we had to swap it. And it was so sad for me because everyone's like, I love this so much. I'm like, it's off by two frames. We can't make it move by two frames. We got to mm. replace it. Mm. Those two frames are important to the story. So if the music doesn't bend, we can't use it. It doesn't mean anything. It right. just, the music didn't bend. Everyone yeah. loved it. They were like, oh, if we could just get yeah. this to bend by two frames. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Right. No, I think that's testimony to the level of, you know, I always use Chop Shop as an example, but every episode of Grey's Anatomy, you would have thought those songs were custom written for the scene. Yep. Lyric for they lyric. Bend. You know, they bend. They bend. Yeah. So that is a great point. And thank you so much, Jennifer, the time flies by. But thank you. Every episode and podcast we have, you know, you, you opened uh, puzzle pieces that aren't touched on because every chat is different. And, and you know, 40, 40 minutes to an hour, it, it's just we're just cracking the surface of what you guys do on a daily basis. So hats off and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. Thank you, Jennifer. And thanks, everybody. Tune in, subscribe, like, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Sync Riffs. Have a great day. Catch you on the side. Namaste. Go. Go.